In this class, we're going to use a graphing calculator quite a bit. I'll be using a TI-84 Plus Silver Edition, this one you see here, and the TI-82, 83, and 84 of any variety all act pretty much the same way. So let's take a look at this calculator. Um, so here we have the screen, and it's quite a large screen because, of course, we can graph on this calculator, and so it's nice to have quite a bit of area to view that graph. These buttons right below the graphing screen are the graphing buttons. Uh, we'll use some of those later in the quarter. Um, Right here are the arrow keys, and you can use those arrow keys to move around in the screens. Now down here we have the basic calculator buttons, right? We have our numbers, the decimal point, divide, multiply, subtract, add, and this is the enter button that makes everything happen. And in this area, we have our advanced and scientific functions. So we'll be using some of those, um, and some of those you'll use in other classes. So let's start by turning on the calculator. All right, so the on button is right here in the lower left corner. All right, so we can turn the calculator on just by pressing that on button. Now if you press it again, it stays on. Um, this button's also used as the attention button, right? If the calculator gets bogged down in some calculation and you want it to stop, you can press the on button to stop it in the middle of whatever it's doing. Um, so if we want to turn off the calculator, we use the same button, right? So if, so if you look closely at this calculator, you will see some blue writing just above that on button. And that blue writing says off. And so what that means is that to turn off this calculator, we press the second button and then we press the on button to do what that blue text is. So second button is blue, so when we press second, we see that we have basically like a shift kind of look to the cursor. We press the on button and the calculator turns right off. So I'm going to turn the calculator on again. Now sometimes people get a calculator and they can't see what's on the screen or they can't see it very well. So you can adjust the contrast on these calculators. and once again, we use a second function to do it. Now, if you look at my arrow key, my up-down arrow key, in the middle, you'll see a blue circle that's half filled darker and half filled, well, half empty. Um, so if I press the second button and then the up, it makes the screen darker. Right? And if I press second and then up and hold it, it just keeps getting darker. Right, And as it was getting darker, there was a number in this upper corner. So right now it's pretty much so dark that I can't see it. So I'm going to press the second button again and then press the down arrow to make it lighter. So there we are. Right, So if I press second and down again, you see a number flash right there. So I keep this calculator usually around a number five or six, but your calculator may need a a higher or lower number. So I've lightened it again, and the calculator's on, but you can't see the cursor at all. And that's just because the contrast is off. And so if I press second and then the up arrow, there we are. We're back where we can see it nicely. Okay, so let's do some fairly basic math. I say fairly basic, because some of it's kind of complicated compared to, you know, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so we're going to multiply 
two numbers. We're going to multiply 5 times 4. So there are a couple of ways we can do multiplication on this calculator. We can do 5 and then the times button and then 4. Right? Then press enter to get the result. Right? There it is, 20. One thing that's really nice about these graphing calculators is that you can see both what you entered and your result at the same time. Um, so the calculators also can use parentheses to do multiplication just like I wrote it here. Right? So 5, I can use this open paren here, 4, close paren. There we are. Press enter. Oops. <laughs> Delete is also a good button. Uh, press enter, we get 20. All right, so here I have um, an operation where we really need the parentheses. So it's 3 times the result of 5 minus 1. And again, we can type it in just the way it looks there. Press enter. We get 12 as we would expect. All right, so here we have negative 4 plus 3. One thing that's really important to to remember is that the minus sign is not what we use for negative numbers. Right down here, right here in the bottom uh, row of buttons, we have a negative sign in parentheses and that's what we use to make a negative number like this negative 4. So negative 4 plus 3 press enter, and we get negative 1, just like we should. Okay, so where were we? Negative 3 squared. Okay, so I'm going to put parentheses around it, just like it shows. All right, so when it comes to squaring a number, uh, we have two options. So right here is an x squared button, and if I just press that, it squares whatever's on my screen. All right, so I get 9, as I should. And let me put a negative 3 here. The other way that we can do a square is to use this caret button, right? And this is good for any exponent. So this little up arrow kind of looking thing says make that an exponent. And once again, we get 9. All right, and so negative 2 to the third power, putting my negative 2 in parentheses, raising it to the third power, press Enter, I get negative 8. All right, so here I have a fraction, 5 thirteenths. So to enter fractions, you just use the division sign. So 5 divided by 13 is the same thing as 5 thirteenths. Now I have the older operating system on my TI-84+. Plus. Um, if you have the newer operating system, using this division sign will actually make things look like a fraction. Alright, so pressing enter, I get a decimal. Now, one nice thing about these calculators is that if I have a fraction and I know that it's equivalent to a decimal, I can actually turn that decimal back into a fraction, right? And where I find that is in the math menu, All right? So if I press math, the very first option there is give me a fraction. So I'm going to press enter and it turns my answer back to a fraction. Okay, all right, so now we have this big chunk of math here. So negative 2 plus bracket 4 times 5 minus 3 plus 1, close bracket. All right, so we have these brackets here. And one thing that you may have noticed is that when we have brackets in this sort of, of an arithmetic um, 
expression, the brackets really do act the same as parentheses. We just use brackets so we have two different symbols and it's easier to see them visually. In the calculator, we're going to need to use parentheses both for the parentheses and for the brackets. Right, so negative 2, right, and I made sure I used this negative down here, not the minus, but the negative, um, plus, and I'm going to use parentheses in place of these two brackets. So we have 4 times 5 minus 3 plus 1, and again, parentheses, right? So these are parentheses, these are parentheses, and we press enter and we get 7. And you should feel free to double check that 7 really is the right answer. All right, so um, I want to show you one more thing. Right, so a lot of these buttons take you into menus and sometimes you'll find yourself in a menu and you just you want to come back to this home screen. All right, so let's say we're in the variables menu. Right, so I press this VARS button and I get here, I realize I don't really need to be here. The way you can get out of any menu is to use the quit function. All right, so quit is our second function on this mode button right here. So if I press second and then the mode button, right, and I just want to point out that when you press second, you see this up arrow here indicating that you've sort of shifted. All right, and then I press mode, right, second mode, quit, I'm back in the home screen. All right, so you know how to turn the calculator on you can turn it off, you know how to use um, various buttons, and you know how to get back to the home screen if you accidentally get yourself somewhere uh, different, somewhere strange. So do play around with the calculator and we will see more details on how we can use the calculator well in future videos.